Hi guys, I um, wanted to get on here to do a little bit of a ramble. So get your cup of coffee, your tea and ready and let's sit down and talk. So um, I'm going to probably need a smoky quartz for this conversation. <laughs> um, okay, I wanted to talk about <coughs> I wanted to talk about followers, okay? And I wanted to talk about the term, you know, like followers and popularity and just that, that, that kind of stuff. Let's talk about that. Um, I've been seeing it a lot in people's Instagram stories. I've been seeing it on a YouTube video or two. Um, people are shifting. The focus seems to be shifting. Um, and I was guilty of this too. So... I feel like there was a time where a lot of us are were so focused on wanting likes. We wanted likes and I want comments and I want a lot of followers on my Instagram or tarot or a Tumblr account or my Facebook. I want a lot of followers. I want a lot of people to watch what I do and comment and make me, you know, make me well known. And I feel like you know, it's easy to get sucked into that kind of a mindset when you're starting to see your account grow. Um, it's but it, it could just as fast as it grows, it could easily die out. <laughs> um, for, so for example, I had a Tumblr account which I actually deleted. I don't even have it anymore. I have a new one now, but I only have like six hundred followers on it, and Tumblr is like dying. So, but back in the day when I first got into tarot, my Tumblr account was flourishing at about six thousand followers, and I had a lot of like interaction on it right and I remember there was like one summer there was a lot of drama and it was it, drama always comes from jealousy bottom line drama comes from jealousy when someone is jealous of someone else shit happens people talk shit blah 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 blah. so what happened on the tumblr thing was there was jealousy going on and some readers were feeling like they weren't as popular or well known or the more popular readers or the big name tarot readers were like taking up all of the, the the readings and no one else was buying from anyone else. And my account was plagued as one of those big name tarot readers that was taking all the accounts or all of the sales. And this was on Tumblr. And, <laughs> and I remember it caused so much drama. And I was like, I, I, never, I remember thinking like, yeah, 6,000 followers is a lot. It's a lot. But it wasn't something that I wanted, like, I didn't ask for it. It just happened. It, it, it literally just happened. And then I remember, like, it, this kind of shit kept going on and on and on. And then finally, like, there was a lot of cyberbullying. Like, I was cyberbullied. I don't talk about that often because I was so, like, the fuck is happening here? <laughs> but I was cyberbullied. And I eventually deleted that account. 6,000 followers down the drain, goodbye, you know? And I created another account, which I didn't put enough love into it anymore because once you're cyber bullied off of like a certain site, you don't really wanna be a part of that anymore, you know? So I really kind of lost my love for Tumblr. <laughs> and that was when I jumped into Instagram. I wasn't even into Instagram. Um, Instagram was starting to be, you know, really popular, but I really wasn't using it. I was a Tumblr person. So I jumped over to Instagram and I remember this is around the time that I moved into my apartment and that was in 2015. So from 2015 to 2016, I went from, I think I had just under a thousand followers on my Instagram account and then I bumped into like 2000. I think I hit 2000 around that time and then it slowed off, you know, <laughs> and then eventually I hit 3000 followers, which was like, um, I think it was 2018. And then I finally hit 4,000 this year and it's been teetering, you know, so it's been a slow grow, but, um, I would have to say like my relationships with readers and people in the tarot community was so much more healthier and so much better than it was in the Tumblr tarot community. It was toxic there. Um, and I haven't been cyber bullied since, you know, so I guess what I'm saying is that I can understand where you want to get thousands of followers. I was one of those people. I wanted to have a lot of followers because I used to think, oh, 
A lot of followers means I'm gonna be making more sales, maybe I can turn Cackling Moon into a full-time business, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, I'm learning, you guys, and I'm starting to realize now that just because you have 10,000 followers or 50,000 doesn't mean all 10,000 or all 50,000 are looking at your shit, okay? <laughs> and it doesn't mean that they're all buying your shit either. So that's, that's the point I want to make is you get caught up in follower account, you get caught up in numbers or who's commenting or who's liking, and it's easy to get caught up in that. It totally is. I get caught up in it. So now I'm kind of like training myself to not care. Um, I'm training myself more to keep putting out content that I love and like content that reflects who I am because I find that is what makes me successful. So the point I want to make is you could have 6,000 followers on a Tumblr account and it goes to shit because of cyberbullying and drama, online drama and jealous tarot readers. You can go to another account and have a slow grow. I mean, like there was one point where um, I had the same amount of followers as another reader and within a matter of months, my follower account yeah. <laughs> it grew just a little bit and this reader had like five or six thousand extra people and I was like what <laughs> it just depends on you it depends on how much time and effort and work and content you want to put on your channel or your your Instagram account or whatever whatever social media thing you're using it depends on the audience who is seeing your content and who loves it? It depends on how much love and care and, and just work that you're putting into it, you know? And I understand, like, it could be frustrating, you guys. I, I get it. It can be frustrating if you see your, your follower count grow and then it drops and you don't know why. Or, like, maybe you were getting 100 comments at one point and now you're only getting 20. Like, that happens to me, you guys. Sometimes I have posts where I get, like, 100 plus comments, or not comments, but likes. And then like the next day I'm posting something and only 30 people liked it. It just happens. The algorithm too is uh, is to, to blame as well. If you're not getting people who are watching and looking and liking everything that you do, your visibility kind of drops on that platform. So bottom line is, is... <laughs> It doesn't matter how many followers you have because you could still be fucking successful. Um, and I'm only going to use me as an example because it's me. But um, I have 4,000 followers on Instagram right now. And sometimes it drops to below 4,000 and then it goes back up and then it drops and then it goes back up. <laughs> but I have 4,000 followers and... My, like, because I have the business account, so you can kind of see, like, your interaction, who's interacting, and, like, a percentage, you know? So, the, the average post that I put up is getting about 60 likes. 60. 60 likes out of 4,000 people, right? But, when I look at, where's my little book? <laughs> when I look at the Cackling Moon business planner... And in my business planner, I write down, I'm not going to show you because it's private, but in my business planner, I write down each month, I add up everything that I made that month in readings, right? I'm always hitting a goal. I'm either hitting the goal, I surpassed the goal, or I've been consistently doing better than the previous year, okay? And so that's just to goes to show you guys. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It doesn't matter how much how much comments or likes that you're getting even though yeah, it feels great when you get it, fine. But it doesn't matter. You could still be successful if you are reaching out to people who genuinely love your content or who love you as a tarot reader or who love you as a spiritual healer or whatever, they're going to come back. They're going to come back to you because they respect you. They love what you do. Um, they know what to expect with your content. Um, and, and sometimes it's just like, it's just like when you go to the grocery store, you tend to stick with the same products, right? The same, the same products. 
Um, I can't tell you how many times I buy the same food, the same brands, because I like it, even if it is a dollar or two more one day or another next day it's the cheapest one. I'll still stick with what I know because it works for me and I love it or it tastes good. So it's the same thing with readings, you guys. <laughs> you can have a thousand followers on your Instagram account and be making fucking bank every month with your readings and it's enough to suffice you and your business and what you need out of life. You don't have to have 10K followers. And if you have 10K followers one day and then the next morning you wake up and you lost half of them, who gives a shit? The people that you lose, the people that don't follow you anymore, don't need to be with you anymore. They don't resonate with you. They don't like your content. They're not going to buy from you if they don't like you. So why should you want them to follow you? And that's just been a big lesson. Oh, I'm getting so heated. <laughs> that has been a big lesson for me because... Um, I was a popular, I hate that word, but I was a popular tarot reader on Tumblr and I don't mean shit now, you know, like it doesn't even matter. That stuff doesn't even matter. The only way that that would matter is the people on Tumblr who liked what I did there followed me to Instagram and a good portion of them did. Okay. A good portion of them followed me over there when I made my post about, why I was leaving the Tumblr, um, the Tumblr tarot community and going to Instagram because they like what I do. They like me as a person or they like my content or whatever. They followed me there, but that 6K following count on my Instagram or on my Tumblr account didn't mean shit. It didn't mean shit. I deleted the account. I deleted the account and I lost all of those followers after I made my post about, I'll be over here if you want to talk to me here, that account didn't mean shit to me anymore. And it just, it's to me, it's, a, it's, it's to prove to myself, <laughs> to prove to myself that I don't need a certain amount of numbers to prove that I am successful, right? I don't need that. I don't need that to show me that I am successful as a tarot reader or successful at what I do or cackling moon means something. No, I make, I make the cackling moon mean something. I make my readings mean something every single time they fucking inspire a client that I read for. Every single time I get an email and no one else sees it because it's in my email. And if I get an email from a client who tells me, your reading resonated. Your reading made me cry. It resonated. I needed that reading. I needed to hear that message. That is the stuff that matters. Not 10K followers or 20K or whatever the fuck. Not that, that stuff doesn't matter. Um, and I have to remind myself this. So I'll probably end up re-watching my own video. <laughs> Every single time I find myself thinking, oh, why did I lose 20 followers? Oh, why don't they resonate with me anymore? They just don't. People outgrow you. I outgrow you. You outgrow me, you know? I'm not going to be the same for you as you aren't for me anymore. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You outgrow somebody. <sighs> I feel so much better now that I got that out because the whole reason why that came out was... um. I've been seeing that I've and, and some of these people who are saying this stuff are people who have large followings. They're not happy, you know, or they see, they say they're finding that they're saying something and it doesn't resonate with everybody. So people unfollow them and then they get like, Oh, why are they all unfollowing me? Well, because you're changing your content is no longer helpful to them or maybe they don't like you. And that's a good thing. <laughs> Let him go. Goodbye. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's the way I see it. If you don't like me, don't follow me. I don't want you to follow me if you don't like me. Don't follow me. If you resonate with my stuff and it inspires you, great. I'm glad. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, just like I follow people who inspire me. And I have no business following people I don't like. If I don't like you or I don't resonate with you or every single time I see you talk and it pisses me off because you're saying something that just I don't agree with, why am I wasting my time and energy watching your stuff? 
That's probably how some people feel when they look at your stuff, you guys. That's probably how some people feel when they look at my stuff. <laughs> That's just how it is. We have different minds. We have the ability to discern when something is good for us and when it's not. And if it's no longer good for you, bye, unfollow, or mute that, mute them. Mute them and then maybe later on, a month later, you'll be like, oh, I miss you. <laughs> And you don't have to do the embarrassing following them again, where then they look and they go, why are you following me again? I thought you've been following me forever. Oh my God, you know how that goes. <laughs> so just, you guys, I don't know. I just, I could just be talking out of my ass and maybe no one's like, no one's getting it. But I just, that's how I feel. <sighs> that's how I feel. I mean, yeah, would it be great to see shitloads of followers yeah it would be great but half of those accounts probably aren't even active anymore so technically you're really only reaching out to so many so it's just it is what it is you guys enjoy what you do and make sure that the content you're putting out is from your heart and it's what you love to do never put stuff out just for the sake of other people because you're you're only going to cater to those people but what about everybody else you know so cater for yourself like that's the way I, that is what i have been learning is the kind of readings and services that i do is stuff i would buy and if I would buy it and spend money on what I'm doing, I know then what I'm putting out there is valuable, okay? Because I would buy it, right? I wanna attract an audience and clients who are like me and who need the things that I'm putting out there. If I can't reach the whole world, I don't wanna reach the whole world. I just wanna reach the people that need me in this moment or in the future, you know? That's all that, that's all that matters. <sighs> So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to keep doing my thing. And the next time I see a post of somebody complaining about, oh, I lost this many followers or how come no one looks at my stuff or, um, oh, I can never speak my truth because I don't want people to unfollow me. Like, then you're not coming from your authentic self, you know, um, you got to start being yourself, be yourself <laughs> And just understand that you can be in a popular place. I was there on Tumblr. It ain't shit now, <laughs> but I was there. I was looked at as a popular reader or a big name reader. That's what they would always say. And it wasn't always the greatest. It was like you constantly had people and eyes and, and everyone was watching you, waiting for you to fuck up, waiting for you to say something offensive, waiting for you to be... Um, like like r racist or say something wrong or utilize a tool that they felt was offensive or whatever the fuck like they were always looking for you to mess up those were the cyber bullies so that they could like put you on blast and try to ruin what you created and when the cackling moon was put under such a, a negative light through the cyber bullying that i was receiving at that time it was so hurtful to me because it was like, I worked my ass off to be who I am <laughs> and to do what I do, even though I can't be 100% myself around my family, you know? I still do this stuff because I love it, but I can't do this stuff out in the open with everybody. Not everybody in my life knows what I do. And that's hurtful when you have these little jealous, people who don't matter trying to tear down what you work so hard for simply because they're jealous because you're taking more sales than them like that's so stupid and so to me it was just like no I wasn't gonna let those people tear down and break who the cackling moon was and what I am and so I said, goodbye, 6,000 followers, goodbye, Tumblr account, goodbye, popular status. And I jumped ship. I deleted that account. I deleted it. Later on, I recreated a new one. Like I said, I only have 600 and like 60 something followers. And half of them are like porn sites. Because <laughs> that's what Tumblr came into, became after a while. And it didn't even matter. It didn't matter. So now I'm over here on Instagram and my popular status is nothing. I'm not popular on Instagram. I'm not pop. I'm only popular. I hate that word, by the way. But I'm only popular 
with the people who freaking love what I do. That's it. I've had people fangirl over me when I had minimal followers. And do you know how sweet that is to have somebody look at you who, <laughs> I, look, I tell my husband, I am so awkward and nerdy and weird. And to have somebody fangirl over me was like, wow, <laughs> that was weird. It was so weird. It was cool. And it made me feel, it made me feel good because I've never experienced something like that. But it was like, I'm being fangirled, but I don't have like 100K followers. I'm not some popular celebrity. I'm just me. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband, he got a kick out of that. He was, I remember he was laughing like, wow, babe, you, ha you have a fan base. And I'm like, a, it's, it's a humble fan base, but it means everything because those are the people that I, why I do all this stuff for, you know, I'm not here for the world and I don't want to be here for the world. I just want to resonate with the select few that need me. I do services for anyone but not anyone is going to is going to resonate with what I do. So, 4,000 followers, I'm fine with Instagram, you know? But if you have a problem with me, come to me. Don't go behind my back. Don't block me and not say anything. Don't unfollow me and don't give me a reason, especially if we talked cuz I've had that happen too. <laughs> and all I did was rather than confront that person, I just unfollowed them and just let them go. But I was genuinely hurt because I went, I attended this person's program. I attended, you know, I think two of their classes, things that they did. And I loved their content. I bought a reading or two. I bought, I did a program with them, a class. And this person unfollows me and it was really upsetting. I remember I came to my husband and I was like pretty much crying about it. Like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> and they never said a shit, never said anything to me, nothing. And rather than me, I didn't want to start anything. I just, I was just like, you know what? I just have to accept that maybe I just didn't, I wasn't doing it for them anymore. I don't know. Maybe I said something that offended them. I don't know. I'll never know because they never reached out to me. And it's like, you know, they don't have to. If you want to unfollow someone, you can unfollow somebody and not have to say shit to them. But I think because I actually spoke to this person, I met them in person a couple times, that's why it hurt. Because it was, you weren't just, you weren't just someone I followed online. You were someone that I attended your classes because I liked what you did, you know? I invested some of my money in you because I liked what you did. And then you just disappear and I was like, well, what happened? So it sucked, that kind of hurts. But you guys, that is also something that you will encounter whether you are the person doing it, you ghost out on someone, or it happens to you. And it's, you know, it's the thing is, is if you are going to put out the message of just unfollow, if you don't, if you don't resonate, you have to be willing to accept that someone else may do the same thing to you. And that's what happened to me. So that's why I said, you know what? I'm going to let this person go silently. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to get upset as much as I was upset, but I'm not going to like, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. Just let them go. And so I unfollowed them because I was so hurt by it that it was like, I couldn't look at their content anymore and be and love it the way I used to. I was looking at it and with the eyes of how fucking dare you or what did you, why? And I didn't like that emotion coming out of me. So I unfollowed and I just said, bye. We were just, we, we maybe we will cross paths later in the future. <laughs> and that's that, you know? And I haven't spoken about that and it's been, maybe a month now and until now like speaking about it but I, I will never put that person's name in shame like I still adore their content and I still think that they're amazing at what they do but I would never bad mouth them like that I just had to get that off my chest because that came up but <laughs> just you guys don't get so caught up in the followers and, and all of that you don't have to have 10,000 followers to be popular or good at what you do like it doesn't define who you are don't strive for popularity, strive for being inspirational, you know? 
And I guess that's all I want to say because this video is already going to be 25 minutes long. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you watched this to the end, um, hopefully we will touch base soon and have some more chit chats. But until then, talk to you guys later.